Okay, now we're going to look at how to find a, an individual time constant in the open circuit time constant method. And we have to do one of these for every capacitor in the circuit. Uh, now, that doesn't mean every individual capacitor. If we can combine some capacitors in parallel, for instance, then we can limit the number of uh, capacitors that we have to anal uh, analyze. Okay, so uh, the first thing uh, in our method uh, is that uh, we're going to uh, eliminate all of the small capacitors uh, except for the one under analysis, and this means that we're going to open circuit them. So all small capacitors in the circuit that aren't the one we're analyzing are open circuited. Uh, hence the name open circuit time constant. Um, all independent sources are going to be eliminated, and this means for voltage sources that we are going to short circuit them. And for current sources, we're going to open circuit them. All very large capacitors in the circuit uh, will become short circuits because they'll have low impedances at the high frequency that we're analyzing. Finally, what we're going to do is replace the capacitor that we're analyzing uh, with, the, uh, with a test voltage source, Vx, and we're going to measure the current that flows through it. So for instance, for the common emitter amplifier uh, shown uh, in this figure right here, uh, the circuit for finding tau due to uh, C pi, for instance, would look something like the following. Okay, so a couple of things that we can see here. Uh, for one, uh, we can eliminate resistor R1 because it's grounded on both sides. Uh, now, R2 doesn't uh, in any way, shape, or form come into contact with CPI or with the voltage source that's replacing it right now, uh, so we don't have to worry about R2. So the only resistance uh, that, uh, that this particular capacitor sees in this case is R pi from the transistor. So we could say, uh, in this case, uh, that tau sub i for c pi is equal to r pi times c pi. And in this case, r pi was r i that we were finding, that driving point resistance. Now, in this procedure, we need to repeat this for uh, all of the CIs uh, in the circuit, uh, so all the individual small capacitors uh, that we have. And remember, some of these might be parallel combinations of other capacitors. Now, once we've found all of the uh, time constants, uh, we're going to assume that we have uh, one dominant high frequency pole, uh, we're, so we're going to make a dominant pole approximation and say that the high frequency shaping factor that we were talking about earlier uh, takes the form of 1 over 1 plus s divided by that uh, pole frequency. And the pole frequency is found by summing all of the time constants for all of the capacitors. So for instance, uh, for the simple bipolar transistor that we were just looking at, uh, omega high uh, would look like 1 divided by C pi times R pi, where R pi was the total resistance that was seen looking at C pi. And we'd have a C mu times R mu, and this would be our dominant pole. OK, in the next uh, uh, slide, we will do an example where we find the high frequency time constant for uh, a, a, an amplifier example uh, that's a little bit more complicated than the one that we just looked at.